Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you some licks in the style of B.B. King, but we're gonna take them from this video of two of my favorite guitar players that you can see on YouTube. It's Jerry Reed and B.B. King playing together. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of this clip and then we're gonna dive into it. But real quick, if you're new to the channel, I wanna hook you up with something right away. I put together this fretboard guide that's gonna tie right in with what we're talking about in today's lesson when it comes to learning sort of your blues and pentatonic scales and mapping those out on the neck. So I wanna give you my cheat sheet for that. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide, or you can click the first link down below. And that's really gonna come in handy, especially for today's lesson. So grab your copy at the first link down below. And with that said, here's the clip. BB, yeah. You like sad songs, huh? Yes, I do. Well, then you're going to love this, because this is the saddest song you ever heard. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, it'd probably roll up and die. <laughs> but this is about a fella and his broke back, okay? I'm laid back in the sack, Jack. On my back in the sack, Jack. Cause I crack the sack really act jack. All right, so one thing that is amazing about this right off the bat is I get the feeling, and I'm just guessing here, but that this is not rehearsed, and Jerry Reed just probably brings on B.B. King to jam, and they've never played this song. My guess is that B.B.'s never heard it, and he's just like, hey, it's a blues in the key of A. You know, come sit in with us, come jam. And this is the sort of thing that happens with a lot of great musicians. You know, oftentimes they don't talk about things the way that we might talk about them, you know, as myself being a guitar instructor and, you know, when we're in a sort of learning environment, we might say, okay, we're going to the four chord here and the one chord here, but musicians are just like, hey, you know, let's jam, let's play, and they're so good that they just basically improvise this stuff and it comes out like what you're hearing in this track. It comes out like a record right away. So the point I wanna drive home with today's lesson is that you've got Jerry Reed, you know, and he's really taken in the neck and he's playing, you know, some more complicated stuff. And then you've got BB who's just sitting back and his hand almost doesn't even move the entire time he plays through this solo. And he's just staying in one position. And you see Jerry, like, especially when they're trading back and forth, you know, Jerry's going up higher and really kind of taking in the whole neck. But BB's just chilling in one area and he plays a really melodic and a great solo. So I wanna show you some of those licks. So let's check out this first lick. All right, so the first lick starts up here. We're playing off of, this is a blues in the key of A and BB goes. So I'm sliding into the 11th fret of the third string. And that note is the note F sharp, which is actually the sixth of an A chord. This is a very common BB sound. He would use this a lot when he'd play. This is sort of an example of the BB box here. So you slide in, you play it twice, 11, 11, then go to 12 on the second string, then come back to 11 on the third string, then go to 10 on the second string. So then back to 11 on the third string and then back to 10 on the second string. So then the final move here, he bends up the 12th fret of the second string. You bend that up a whole step. So that's 12 sounding all the way up to the 14th fret there into the note C sharp. Now it starts on beat two. One and two and three and four and one and two and. 
So the first measure is eighth notes, two and three and four and, then when you get to the second measure, you go one, two, and you play quarter notes just right on the beat. Here it is again, three and four and one and. Then of course the vibrato in there, on that root note, that's the note A. So that's it, just a couple notes there, and I'm thinking about this chord in A6 here. Or if you use a cage system, this would be like your C shape for the A chord. And then you've got this lick, right? Coming off of that chord. Let's check out this next one. So here BB goes higher and plays one and two. So he's bending here on this time the first string, going up from 12 to 14, bending that E up to F sharp, it's a whole step. Then skip to the second string, go to the note B here on the 12th fret, bend that up to C sharp, so. Then bring it down to natural, then down to the note A there on the 10th fret and then finish on that F sharp note, that sixth of the scale in the key of A. So. One and two and three and four and one and two and. Notice that he's playing on the off beats. One and two and three and four and, and then one and two, then ending on the beat. One and two. Not a lot of notes here but a great sound. And again, notice we haven't really left that 10th position. So BB oftentimes would get a lot of other notes and variations without leaving positions by doing different kinds of bends. So sometimes he'd bend a whole step, sometimes it'd be a half step, you know, and more bluesier style bends. Then he'd go up to the first string, do whole step bends, Sometimes even a minor third. That's a very common BB King sound. So he's getting a lot of notes all by just milking a couple notes and using different bends. All right, so here he's bending a half step. Okay, so that's that note B. Instead of going up to C sharp, it's going up to C. Then you've got this cool little triplet, hammer pull. So this would be 10 going to 12, pull off back to 10. Then go to 11 on the third string, and then back to 10, 10 on the second string. Okay, then it finishes back on the 12th fret. So a lot of times BB would play very similar things, but then how he ended it was different. So this would go. So that's three licks there. Now what I'm gonna do is play them back to back just so you can hear what these can sound like over, I'm just gonna play a simple kind of A7 country blues. Here's what it sounds like. Wow. Two, three, four. So take those licks and see if you can work them into your playing. 
And the point of all of this is that you don't have to go all over the neck. You don't even have to learn all the positions on the neck to make great music and start soloing. So a lot of times, you know, when we start learning the neck and we're learning maybe our pentatonic patterns, it's like, well, I better learn every position. And for me, that's gonna be overwhelming. So a great place to start is just getting really familiar with one position and then branching out from there. And to help you make that connection between the chords and the scales, be sure to grab my fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five patterns that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And this is how I basically visualize the neck. So when I look down at the neck, I'm seeing these different shapes and I know how to get around from one position to the next or just stay in one position and copy, say, like some of these BB King licks that are really just showing you how to do a lot with a little. So grab your copy completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. Hope you got some value out of today's lesson. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day and we'll see you in another video real soon. When you're all laid up in traction, cut your action, just a fraction, Jack. <laughs>